Sorry, I just started recording now. So yeah, yeah, we're not really going to go over trees in this specific course, but we do cover it in the materials today. Any other questions? All right. <clears throat> so stacks, queues, and linked lists. So a stack, which we have should be pretty familiar with, is a last in, first out. It's essentially kind of like an array that where the last element that goes into the array, um, when you remove an element from the array, it has to be the one you most recently inserted. So it goes last in, first out. The last element that goes into the array will be, the, or the stack will be the first one to be removed. And opposite um, is a queue. It is a first in, first out. So the first element to go in is the first element to come out. Just like if you line up for, if you're at Disney World or at Six Flags or wherever you're at, um, if you line up for a ride, the first person in the, in the line will be the first person to, to come out of the line to go onto the ride. So in queue and DQ, these are like specific methods on in the, in the queue. Insert and remove are uh, methods within a stack. But next we get into linked lists. Has anybody heard of a linked list before? In that CS50 course, for sure. They talked about uh -huh. pointers. Pointers? Yep, so <clears throat> stacks and queues are relatively straightforward, but linked lists, they get, we start to get a little more complex. So linked lists, we have something called like a node, a head node. We have some data and what we call a pointer that points to the next node. So we have nodes, which in itself is a data structure, but it's a it's like a smaller data structure than a linked list. So we have nodes, we have a head node and subsequent nodes. So let's take a look at this. <clears throat> but so like, why do linked lists even exist? Does anybody have any questions about kind of what this is? We'll get into explicitly what it does and why it's important. So why do linked lists exist? So the problem, there are all these data structures were developed because at some point some computer scientist, some developer ran into some issues with regards to, you know, computational power or memory management. Um, and so they developed this specific data structure to solve the, it, the problems that they're running into. So the problem, for example, say we have an array of like five or six elements, four, seven, two, eight, six, and nine. When we declare that variable, which is an array of, you know, six values, when it's stored in our computer, it's stored at, in RAM, in our RAM, so which is random access memory. It's like short-term memory on your, on your local machine. And each one of these characters or each one of these squares represents an address in your RAM. So, you know, when you saw those hashes, when you declare an object that like, a bunch of random numbers, that's kind of like where it's located in memory. So when we declare an array, array one, with these six values, it'll store those six values in addresses in memory all right next to one another. So in order for this array to exist, all the values in the array um, are right next to one another. <clears throat> but then, Say we declare another just random variable five and that value of five just so happens to get stored in the address right next to where that array is right here. So now if we wanted to manipulate this array in memory, such as like adding another value to it, it needs to store so right now I'm pushing one into this array. In memory, it needs to go explicitly where the number five is in our RAM. So what happens at that point? So it's gonna have to remove that this original array from memory and put it into another location where there's enough space 
for the new array. Is everyone, what questions do you have so far about this, about how arrays kind of work and where they're stored in memory? <clears throat> nope. All right, so that's all fine and dandy, but what if there wasn't enough space when I add this element, this insert this value of one into the array? So here's an, here's an, I'm just continuing to build upon this. So I've got this array right here, and I, and I just so happen to declare four new variables, five, three, eight, and two. And again, random access memory, everything's just stored randomly in memory. And say five, three, eight, and two are stored in different memory locations in our RAM. And this is like a, a representation of all the memory on our computer. And I decide to push add one to the original array right here. But so five, is right next to the array in memory. So one can't, we can't really push one right into, into here because five, there's already a value in memory that's taken up. So it tries to look for a place in memory to where four, seven, two, eight, six, nine, and one can exist. So it, it's looking and it's not finding any location in, our, in RAM that this array can exist. So we'll throw an error saying like, hey, I, it'll, like, it'll just be like, hey, like, it'll, it'll just like throw an error in, in, in your machine. Um, so that's why linked lists kind of exist. <clears throat> so if we created linked, a linked list that we can recreate this array and store it pretty much anywhere in memory um, without running into this issue right here, uh, let's check it out. So again, I've got five, three, eight, and two stored. So if I converted this array to a linked list data structure, I can create an element or a node of four right here. And then when I create a, another node seven, so let's say this, is, this node is now seven, and in the head node, I have a pointer that's going to be pointing to the seven. So the other node. So just so it just so happens that when I created another node with a value of seven in it, it just got placed over here in memory. Now, if I decided to create a new node of two, it might get placed somewhere else. So right now I have enough space for what this original array with the one added to it in, in RAM Whereas before, I didn't. So now I actually have space in a RAM by converting this array to a linked list data structure. What questions do you have about a linked list? Now it actually just a linked list will naturally take up more memory, but it doesn't explicitly hold a, a large chunk of memory all right next to one another. All right. So let's actually code what a linked list look like, looks like. All right, well. <clears throat> Hold on one second, let me pull it up. Oh no, let go. Okay. <clears throat> so if you look at a linked list is a data structure in and of itself which just looks like another object. Whoop. 
So I've got linked disk. I'm going to touch linked list.py and code linked list. So if I wanted to create a linked list data structure, and again, these just look like objects that we have been creating. So if I wanted to create a new linked list data structure, I can call it class. This is going to be a linked list. And each linked list starts with a head node. So I can def in my initial, when I initialize a linked list, I can say head. But when I first initialize an empty linked list, it doesn't have an, a head node. So the, the default value, let's say, can be none. And then I can do self.head equals none, or head. So that's how I declare a new linked list. So if I say like new linked list equals linked list and invoke it, I'm not passing anything in there yet, which is okay. So if I run Python, well, let's actually print the linked list first. Linked list, well, new LL. Python linked list. So there's my new linked list, but right now it's empty. I can test to see if my linked list is empty because there is no value at head. Is everyone with me so far? What questions do you have about creating a linked list? All right. <clears throat> but now you also see that we have these things called nodes. And a node has the value right here. So this is a node. It has a value. And then it also has a pointer, which is another value that points to the next node or Essentially, that is the next node. So right there. So before I said the node is also its own little data structure. So if I wanted to create a class, it just says node. And in the init, init takes in self, takes in data, which initially is none by default, it's just have default values. And then the next node is also none. Self dot data equals data and self dot next node equals next node. Cool. So let's just create a random node, say like new node equals node. And let's pass in some data. Let's pass in four. Let's actually recreate four, seven, two, eight, whatever. So four. So let's print um, new node. So if I run this, there's my node right there. And I also have a new linked list object. And I can check the value of the node by doing node.data and the data, the value is four. What questions do you have right now about initializing a new linked list, which is initially empty, and then initializing a new node? All right. <clears throat> but now there's a couple of methods that we need in order to actually create a linked list and to modify a linked list. So a linked list can only be added to, and it's essentially, it could only, you can only add things to the end of the linked list. So when, when every time you insert something, it inserts to the end. And anytime you remove it, um, well, I guess that's not necessarily true. <clears throat> anyway. Um, but yeah, so anytime you add things to a node, you add to from the start and you add it. So it's kind of like, it's just like a list, but it's just linked a little bit differently. So we need to insert a new, like an empty, if, if we initialize with an empty linked list, we want to add a new node to it. 
So one of the methods, self or def, is it insert or add? So self dot, we wanna to add to the linked list. So how we do that is right now we're initializing the node randomly down here, but we wanna initialize a new node when we add to the linked list. Link list. So we can do that by doing, you know, new node, just like how I did down there, equals node followed by data. So that creates a new node. And when the initial, when the link list is empty, like it is down here, and I create an, a new node, where should it go in the link list if it's originally empty? So right now I'm initializing an empty link list here. And let's say I wanna add four to it by executing dot add four to it. Where does the, sorry, go ahead. If it's empty, it should be your head. Yep. So if the link list is initially empty, which it is right here, there's nothing added to it. And now I wanna add the very first element to it or the very first node to it or value a four, if the head is empty, or if there is no value in the head, then the very first element should be added to the head. So I can do if self.head equals none, self.head equals new node. And if I can test that by doing print, uh, new link list dot head. Let's print that twice. First, when it's empty, and then after I add four to it. So initially it's, oh, see. <clears throat> so initially it's empty right here. And then I added the value of four to it. And now the head is a node object, which I created right here. So, so now the head is now in itself a new node. Now in, to, in order to access that value, I can do new, new link list dot head dot data. Actually it's dot data. Cause now I actually wanna grab the value of that node or of the value of the head node so if you were to do uh, new link list dot head dot next node right now it would be none so if i did next node right here yes right. yeah. so let's run it exactly so the head nodes next node so the second value so that's the first value. The second value is gonna be seven. Right now, I've only added four to it. Um, but when I add seven, the next node should be a node object with a value of seven. <clears throat> so if I wanted to add seven to it, whoop. Uh, data. Now let's say I wanted to add seven to it. So new link list add seven. So right here is self.head equals none, which it doesn't equal none anymore because four is the head node. What do I want to do? Because I want to add to the very end of the, the link list. So here I can say else, no, I'm gonna just create a variable called current node, which I have to start from the very first um, node in the linked list. So that's one of the drawbacks about a linked list is that if I wanna search for something or add to it, I have to loop, essentially loop through the entire linked list until I get to the very end and then add it 
at, to the very at end of the link list. So I need to start at the head node right there. And then I can say like, hey, while the current node's next node, um, essentially while there is, so I can say, while the current node's next node exists, while there is a next node, I want to reassign the current node's value to the current node's <laughs> next node's value. So I'm saying like, hey, if I wanted to add seven, or say I wanted to add, what is it, seven, two, I can say, hey, well, the current node's next node is like, while there is a next node, then reassign the current node. So I'm, I'm essentially stepping through. So the current node's first, the head node. If the head node's next node exists, then move to the next node. So that's why I'm reassigning the current node to the next node. And then while there, if I'm, I'm while this is happening, I'm just continuing to iterate down the link list. Then once the current node's next node doesn't exist, so once it reaches one, I can say the current node's next node equals the new node, which I'm creating up here. And at the very end, I can always just return the new node value. So now that I add seven to it, I can print, you know, uh, new link list dot head up again. So there's the head. So I'm printing the head right here. Hold on. Whoa. Printing that head right here. It's none. I'm adding a value and printing the head right here. Again, it's, it's a node. All right, it's right there, it's a node. And now I'm printing the data of the new head, at head, is, which is four. And again, I'm printing the head right there. But what if I wanna print the new next node of head? So there's the next node. And I can test that by doing node.data. So there's four and seven. What questions do you have about adding to a linked list? So it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't have as much as easy as predefined operations as say an array, you can't slice in the middle and, or you can do that, but it, it, it's a lot more cumbersome. So think about it as if we're creating a slice or splice or anything like th those methods from scratch. Tom, can you, can you explain one more time uh, in, in, in when we would want to do this in, in real life? Or like, does John do this at work? <clears throat> Probably not. <laughs> um, so for example, at my last job, we implemented or I implemented a link list to determine the route a user took when on our website or in our application. So a user login, that's the head node. And then say a user clicked, you know, um, join community next. That's the second next, the node. And then say they joined like another value or click somewhere else and it registered that value and it added it to that. So each, each point a person clicked, I added it to what is essentially a linked list. So that's one way um, you can, that's one like real life example of a linked list. Um, Noah, do you know of anything? Uh, I have yet to use yeah. a linked list in, real, in the real world yet, but it can happen. Yeah. yeah. Just so like, for example, yeah, it can definitely happen. And it also depends on how, you know, how sensitive your team or the application you're working on is 
as far as like memory management, searching and all that stuff. Um, so, but yeah, it, it definitely can come up and more so they might come up with like an interview questions. Like they'll say like, Hey, you have two, two separate linked lists with values in it. Check to create a method or an algorithm to check to see if these link lists collide at any point. So anytime they collide and then like go on to a single value. Um, I know that th those are, those are types of questions that may come up. So you have to like not only develop a link list, but also come up with an algorithm to check if two link lists collide, just like random stuff like that. Cool. Thank you. <clears throat> yep. What other questions do you have? I have a quick question regarding line 11, where you say while current node dot next node is true. So does that mean none is inherently falsy? Is that correct? Okay. Yep. So now we're adding elements to a link list. So let's actually just keep on adding two, eight, six, nine, one. So if I wanted to do two, eight, six, nine, one, eight, six, nine, one, clear. And then I can do print, you know, new link list dot head dot next node. dot next node dot data. So the current node nodes next node, which is seven, that next node, which is two data, which it should be the value of two. So if I run that right there, and then if I wanted to, I can keep on adding on like, all right, next node, dot data eight and I just keep on adding you can find it so I'm just printing off the, the values at each node but now <clears throat> you're adding to a node but now let's say we want to remove an element from the node so say if I wanted to remove eight from that node this is where it gets a little more tricky because so the node at eight, so say, let's just print, delete that. So this node, next node is pointing to this node, node of seven, which is pointing to the node of two, which is pointing to the node of eight. If I wanted to remove eight, two's next node, I have to reassign to eight's next node, which is six. So, so if I removed it, two's next node would have to be six. So I have to come up with an algorithm to keep track of eight's next node and then reassign it to two's next node. So I'm like removing eight from the link list. So if I just said like dot remove self, and then data, so the value. So one of the drawbacks of a linked list is that I have to start at the very head node. I can't start anywhere in the middle of the linked list. I always have to start at the head node because that's the only value in the linked list. So I can say, you know, the current, node, which is the self dot head node. And now I have to come up with um, some way to keep track of nodes. So say if I search through the search through the link list until I hit eight, what values do I have to somewhere store um, so I can access later? As I said before, I need the node, the two's next node value, which is eight's previous node. 
And then I also need eight's next node. So I would need the current node, which might be eight, and the previous node, which is two. So I can access the current node's next node, which is six, and then the previous node's next node, or essentially just the previous node. So I can say like previous node initially is none because head node doesn't have any value or doesn't have a previous node. So what I can do is say like, hey, if the current nodes, um, current node dot data equals data. So if like immediately um, current nodes, so say if it's head data, I can reassign the self dot head to the current nodes dot next node. So if the data I type in is like four, so if the current node data is four, then I can just reassign the head node to the self dot, the current nodes, essentially the current nodes next node, which would then be seven. So now the, the value of self dot head, the head node is now seven. So again, if I initially typed in four, types in four in here, reassign current node to the head node. So current node, which is currently the head nodes data, which is four equals four, reassign the head node to the current node, next node value. So that's, if it's a, yep. Can you have duplicate values within a link? Yeah, you can, except when you, uh, if you had multiple values in a linked list, if you went to remove the one of the values of the duplicates, it would, unless you had some logic in there, it would only remove the first time it reaches the first element. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's why I was asking because it seemed like it would always remove the first um, like instance of that value. But yeah, it would unless you somehow provided some logic in there um, that said like how many there were and which one you wanted to remove. But yeah, <clears throat> yeah, good question. Else, so if it's not the head node that we're trying to remove, this is where it gets, again, tricky. While the current node's data does not equal the data we're trying to remove, we're gonna reassign the previous node to the current node, because we're, again, moving down the line. So now the previous node is gonna be the current node, and then we're reassigning the current node to equal the current node's next node. So again, if current node is initially head, the current node's data, so four does not equal whatever, we're, re we're gonna move down the line. So the previous node is now the current node, I'm sorry, the previous node, yeah. We're reassigning the current node to the previous node. And now we're, then we're reassigning the current node to the current node's next node. So this is literally just moving down the line. So if four does not equal, so say we're, again, we're trying to remove eight. So head initial value is four does not equal eight. So now we're reassigning four to being the previous node. And now the current node is the head, which is four, this next node, which is now seven. So now the previous node is four and the current node is now seven. And now current node dot data seven does not equal eight. Now we're seeing reassigning the current node, which is seven to the previous node. So now previous node is now seven. And then now the current node is the previous or the current node's next node, which is the current node was seven, but now it's two. So 
previous is seven. Now, now the, and then the current one is now two. Again, current node data, which is two, does not equal eight. Two is being reassigned to the previous node. And then the current node uh, is being reassigned to the current node's next node, which is eight. So now we're on eight. So current node's data, which is eight, does not equal data. No, it does equal data. So what do we want to do? We want to assign the previous node, which is two. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I heard someone talk. So the previous node is now two. <clears throat> we want to assign the previous node's next node, which was originally eight, to be the current node, which is currently eight, but we would want to reassign it to six. So the current node, next node. So we're essentially taking out eight from the middle and joining two and six. And at the very end, we can either return uh, self.current node or self.head, I think is what we usually return. And we can test that out quickly by doing, just keeping it simple. We can print a new link list dot head dot data, next node dot data, next node dot next node dot data. If we print that, I just wanna see what we get. We get four, seven, two. If we wanted to remove seven, print, or I'm sorry, new link list dot remove seven. And then again, we printed dot new link list dot head dot data. And then the new link list head dot next node dot data. We should see A change. So initially it's four, seven, two, and then we remove seven. And now what originally right here was seven is now two. Really seven is now two. So that's a link list. What questions do you have about the linked list data structure? The drawback about a linked list data structure is that you have to iteratively go through it. So maybe what, if the linked list data structure was like a million line, had like a length of a million or there was a million uh, nodes in it, you'd have to start from the very head node and iterate through the, the length of the linked list or the size of the linked list, which is, kind of annoying. So it's not that efficient to search through. Right. What questions do you have? Okay. 